some other attitudes. How many, how many water do you think? Um, so we'll go to the section where it's Jack and Thing. Um, and that VI was originally written um, by a, a someone before Bill, Bill Joy, who then subsequently joined Sun. Um, and that code uh, became part of the AT&T Unix license process. Um, and so us free operating system users can't use any of that original code today. Um, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the first editor for a, a Unix-like proto-system. Um, there was before that there was Ed. Uh, I actually have used Ed because occasionally I'll get stuck on a minimal system, um, and so I was decided to to learn it enough to do some basic line editing. Um, it's a line editor. Also, in case I ever didn't have a a terminal I have like a teletype machine or something, it would be good to use. Um, because it, it'll, it prints out lines, you enter a command, it prints out the new line. It doesn't do any visualness. Um, that's where the V and the VI come from. But uh, I have found that even today on a real computer, uh, I'll use Ed occasionally because I'll have um, printed out some information uh, and then I want to to make an edit based on that information. Um, and rather than worrying about copying it into some sort of buffer to paste in, or, I just, or maybe I'm not copying it, I just want to look at it and explain it in English, uh, or something else. Um, right? This way I don't clutter up my screen. Um, so, right, what's, what's on line three? I did that wrong. All right, yeah, yes. Oh, right. oh, this file does not have a line three. It has one line. Um, so I've printed out that line. Um, but I can make an ed edit. Um, now that I've, I'm on this line, I want to change, well, lazy dog is sort of, well, that's not really a, we don't want to insult the dog. Um, so I don't know, what's, what's something, you know, let's, we'll call it a sleepy dog. That's why he's just laying there. Um, he's sleepy. Right, so now if I print that out, oh, great. Now I can write that out and quit. Right, and my uh, my edit took. Well, that's great. Um, there are other features to add, but by and large, it's fairly simple. <laughs> there are other features to add. There are. You can like. Select a line, and change it, <laughs> and add lines, and subtract them. Um, you can global regular expression print. Yes. So so X X is an expanded line editor, um, and at some point Bill added a visual mode to it, uh, and that became more popular than than the the line editing mode, so the visual mode is made the default. Um, that's great. Um, Vim is short for VI Improved. Um, it's first released in 91. Uh, trivia, what platform was it released for? Maybe I should look at my notes. Um, Solar? Sco? No, I, I believe it was a... Um, For the Amiga. Oh. <laughs> wow. Something good did come out of the Amiga. Amazing. Uh, all right, so I was going to show you some basic use. Uh, if you're not familiar with VI, uh, it, if you don't know how to use it going in, it won't end well. <laughs> um, 
Um, so, right, so it's possible if, if, you, if you don't know how to interact with it and you've started it up and I'm editing this file, I, I've carefully chosen the file to be one that explains to me how to use it. Um, I, I'm not really sure how to move the cursor around. I don't even know how to quit. Um, <laughs> right? Um, so, so the way Vim works is it's a modal editor. So it, sort of think of it as a decision tree. Depending on which mode you're in, the keys will do different things. So by default, it's in normal mode. Um, and some of, the, some of the commands I might enter in normal mode are typing on, and it's hitting J. So J will move my cursor down. Um, H would move it left, L to the right, and K is up. As, as though they're arrow keys. Um, great. Uh, there are the other modes the, 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 that you'll be interested in are insert mode, um, where you'll do most of your actual editing. Uh, so if I'm in normal mode, there's another command to get into insert mode. <coughs> Just like those other commands, if I hit I, I'll be in insert mode, and I can type out some text. Right, great, but now I'm still in insert mode. I can't, I can't move my cursor around. Um, to get out of insert mode, I'm going to hit escape. Uh, and I'm out of insert mode. Uh, it's a nice feature about VI is it, it prints out if you're in insert mode, uh, if you're absent-minded amount of mean, or vim, as opposed to VI, which will give you a hint as to which mode you're in, which you, takes more mental effort. Um, so that's nice. Uh, there's also command mode. I can get in command mode by typing a colon, um, where I can do things like uh, pull up some help about um, auto indent. And, well, the line wrapping is sort of horrid. Uh, the price you get for having to see the screen. Um, but there's online help. If I didn't know how to use auto indent, um, I could read this and have some better idea how to use it. Um, the various other commands. Um, an important one is if you're, if I've started up Vim but I want to get out of it, um, there's a quit command, Q. Oh, I've made changes to the file. Uh, there's a write command, W. Which will write it out. This uh, temp file, and now I can quit. Um, so Vim Tutor is when Vim is started with Vim Tutor, it has this file that tells you how to use it, uh, and that copies to a temporary file, so you can mess it up all you want. Uh, that's a fairly good way to start. Yes. How did you get out of the help screen? Ah, I, I got out of the help screen um, the same way I got out of the whole editor. Um, I, I quit that buffer. I closed that buffer. Uh, so there, there are various concepts that have to be layered on to each other. Uh, so there, there's this notion of an editing buffer, which you can map to a file, um, although in the case, I guess, I guess it's technically to a file in the help screen. But a, a, a place in memory where it can, where it can store text. Um, and, but then it, it, buffers can be mapped to windows uh, for actual display. So, so uh, if you if you observe carefully, uh, <coughs> right, right. If I make this the font small, you can see um, that both my help and and the original file I was working on are displayed. Um, so in this case, both of the buffers that are open are displayed. Um, and so I just simply closed the file associated with that one buffer and it went away and the window manager filled the screen back up with the rest of them. Um, How do you switch between buffers? Or between so, so I can switch between windows if I hit control W um, and then a direction key. So I'm going to use J because I want to go down. Um, now I'm in this bottom one. Um, so control W, K back to the top one. Uh, there, there are also, if, if I, um, how do I maximize a window? 
Well, control plus will make it bigger. You count control plus, control W plus will increase right. by however many you say, but I don't know the. Control W underscore, I remembered. Nice. Uh, right. So, so, so how this works with me is I use some small subset of the commands every day, and then I know that others exist, and I can't remember what to do. Um, but so now I can only, I only can see this one, but um, there's a buffers command um, that will print out my available buffers. Um, And there's some way to cycle through them. I, I, I want to take the other buffer and display it in this window. Vim can be composed. Um, so, uh, for easier use of demonstration, I'm going to introduce some more commands than the ones we already know. Uh, there, I can take this this line and move it into a a, a cut register. Um, so I'm just going to hit dd, which will remove the line from the file and put it in the cut register. Um, I can get lines out of the default one um, with the p command. So if I hit p, I'll get my line back. Um, and I can do that again, and I'll keep getting the line out of that register. Um, but that might get tedious. Um, perhaps I was mean to the teacher in school, and so I needed to write write this line on the chalkboard or the, the um, terminal many times, um, I can compose that command by typing some number in front of it that I want it to be repeated that many times. So uh, let's say I need to type it 15 times, just type the number 15, and then P again, I'll get 15 copies of that line. It just repeats the command uh, 15 times. Um, um, that's useful to know about commands. And so that, that works for pretty much any command. Uh, it's not I can do it for the navigation commands, uh, etc. There, as you're going along and I want to um, insert some text, um, so if I hit I to get into insert mode, it's going to put the cursor in front of whatever character I was on. <coughs> sort of. Uh, that, Maybe I've used it so long, but insert to me sort of means like put it right before um, the uh, the red brown fox. Um, but there there are two other useful ways to get into insert mode. Um, small a will position the cursor after the current position. Um, so I was on the hyphen before, and I hit little a. I can type after it. If I hit hit i, I can type before it. Um, often, I'll just have the cursor on some line, and I want to append text to it. Um, big A will move the cursor to the end of the line and enter insert mode. Um, makes me more productive. Capital I. Capital I. Is at the front. Thank you. Uh, so I can show about. Um, oh yeah. So so I, I showed how to delete a line with DD. Uh, I can I can get rid of individual. Capital B. Capital B for oh. Deletes the rest of the line. Puts you in. Oh, it doesn't put you in answer. There's one that puts you in answer. 
Right. So, right, so there, there are also some notions of um, right. So special special things. Um, right. So there are some motions. So right. So so capital D will delete to the end of the line um, and leave you in normal mode. Um, but there are various commands that modify. There's a C command which will get rid of some amount of text and put you in this mode, sort of like, hey, I want to replace this thing. Um, right? Maybe it's correct. Correct. Yes. Oh, correct. Right. Yes. Um, or change. Right. Right. And, and, and so, so I can mod so if I want to replace a word, um, C and then W will tell it to get rid of that word, a space delimited words. Um, Uh, and but I can I can use other other modifiers if I wanted to um, correct until the end of the line C and then dollar sign um, I can correct until the end of the line if, if you know regular expressions dollar sign is easy to remember at the end of the line um, and in fact I can use that just as a motion if my cursor is anywhere dollar sign go to the end of the line and zero to go to the front will help you navigate around. Um, but CW or C dollar sign I use a lot. The other thing, uh, introducing these out of order, I'll, I'll come back to that. Do you want to go through like uh, what W, B, E, and F? You want to go through what those do? <laughs> I think it helps if when you're trying to do shortcuts and you like. E will go to the end of the current line. Or e e current go to word. the word. W is the front w of the next word. Front of the next word. B is back. B is back to the and end. And F is not. The F is F is forward. Yeah. So, right, right. So, so rather than moving the cursor arbitrarily in a Cartesian grid, um, the editor will understand spaces. But then you can do things like C E will correct to the beginning of the next word. Correct the previous word, um, just like C dollar sign. Right. Yeah. So 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 W um, C no W B and E are useful for moving it around. If you look at where they're moving and think about that in relation to the correction, if it's moving the cursor back, it's going to correct behind behind where it is, et cetera. Um, there's also um, a, a riff on insert mode. Um, I can hit R, capital R, and get in replace mode, which is a overwrite mode. Um, and I can replace individual characters with just small r. Uh, so those are some basic commands. Um, Sorry, what's the difference between big R and little r? So, so big R will put it in replace mode, which is like insert mode. It will stay in there as long as you're typing and just keep replacing the character the character underneath the cursor. And R will correct a single character. And then leave insert mode? Right, and then, and then, and then, then you leave replace. Yeah, no, little r will, will return to normal mode. So take just that one action. Don't forget an X. Yeah. So, and X will just remove the current character and put it in the pacer, the default pacer register. Um, but this is sort of useful. A neat trick. If I um, if I had typed a word incorrectly, like like I misspelled neighbor because I I, I didn't remember the mnemonic. Um, by by using I can use X to to remove this and put in the, the pace register, the I, um, and now my cursor is positioned over the next character, E. If I use P now to pull that character out of the pace register and put in the document, it will go after where the register, or where, where, after where the cursor is. Um, but so that's a neat trick for X, XP for transposing characters. Um, that's something that happens in editing a lot, is characters get in the wrong order, I find. 
Did I miss anyone's favorite command? You. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Control R. Right. Uh, so, so there's there's pretty powerful undo and, and redo features. Um, so let's say I made a, a, a bad edit. Um, oops. Um, oh, I, I should talk about how I was able to do that in a second too. Um, but if I type U, I can undo that action and redo it with Control R, um, and I can save arbitrarily many actions to replay or unplay at a later date. Um, so if we're moving around in the file, um, there's a command capital G will just go to the last line in the file. Uh, the companion to that command is gg, which will go to the well, nth line of the file. In, in, the, in the no modification case, the first line. Um, but if I type a some line number in front of it, like 12, and then I type gg, I'll jump to the 12th line. I should try on line numbers. I like to put on line numbers. So Colon, S -E -T and you. Set numbers. Yeah. Hey, it's not on line 12. Um, Don't you just use colon? For yes. Colon line number? One less character? Colon line number to go to any line number. Oh, I never learned that. You can also do high and middle cool. and low. Like capital H, capital M, capital L. If you don't want to do the whole file, just your current. Oh, sweet. And currently, you also type in the line number and the capital G. I, and there's there's more than one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a pro hacker. They're working on code blocks. There are tricks with the curly brace. You can jump to the previous code block to the next code block. That's a paragraph. Well, if I'm on, if I'm on a matching um, percent, we'll also percent. go back and forth. All right, and type a number, a numeric, a digit, or some kind. And then uh, go to the beginning of it. And hit Control A. <laughs> hit it a couple of times, right? <laughs> and then hit Control X. Upper or lower? Doesn't matter. Lower. Lower case. Control A. Control well, that's a neat X. trick. Um, what do you use it for? <laughs> oh, if you've got. If you need to count something. <laughs> off by one errors. Mostly, <laughs> seriously. I mean, they they happen all the time. So uh, yeah, those and and then you hit like like if you're editing CSS and you want to increase something by 30 pixels, then you say 30 plus a, um, and then you can do that over and over and over again on your CSS line. And and if that's like so, the the other trick with that is um, jump up one line and hit Shift J. And now go to the beginning of the line. <coughs> now hit Control A. So you don't it, like it'll like if you've got a string of numbers on a on a line, it'll jump to the first one and increment that. So the first one after the character. So you don't even have to find it in the in the editor line. You just jump it. Just yeah. You know. Right. And I was I thought about this command um, that. I can repeat my last command just by typing period. Yes. Um, so you can't tell, but but when I was counting, I thought, gee, I just said period. Right. So here. if you're on a CSS file, you have three widths, and you need to change them all. Then um, yeah, do it once, and then dot dot on the next two lines or whatever. It's a little increment. Thirty. Um, it, it'll even it'll even recognize a, a, a negative. Like, so if you make that minus 83, and you get control A, it'll decrement. So, so. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes, and so, so all these are documented. Some of them were, are, you learn over time. If you don't remember, that's okay. Um, 
I wanted to show you a cool trick I know, um, and that's uh, the visual block mode. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, right, I, uh, it's the more than one way to solve this problem, but say I, I just, visual mode is, well, I guess I should cover visual mode more generally first. Uh, visual mode is interesting <laughs> because, right, if I want to remove five lines, well, I have these, or some area, I have these line numbers, and I can sort of keep them in my head, but sometimes it's just easier. If I type V, I'm in visual mode, and now when I move the cursor around, it will highlight things. And now that I've highlighted something, I can take an action on the highlighted stuff. <coughs> um, so little v, regular ends don't match up, wrap around, visual mode. Capital V, just whole lines at a time. Um, if I hit control V, I'm in visual block mode. Um, and so if you, if you really think about the cursor as a Cartesian grid or Legos or something, um, now I can select a whole column of text that's the same width, the same cursor positions in each line, and act on it. So I can remove this. Uh, but uh, so, something I find I want to do a lot is insert some string of characters the same position in multiple lines. Uh, and so I'll just select a one, one width wide column in visual block mode and now I have to hit Shift I to get into the insert mode, um, and I can insert some sort of comment. Um, and now, then when I hit Escape, it inserted the string I typed in all of the lines at that position. Can you do that again? Can I can do that again. Yes. Um, can you do the inverse of that? Sure. What would be in, what? What's the inverse of that? Can you delete? delete that? So, so delete the oh. e's. Oh, right, because I typed it wrong. Yeah. You just hit X instead. Uh, so I I hit uh, Control V to enter visual block mode, um, and then I, then I'm using uh, HJKNL to move my cursor around. Um, and then for inserting something, it's shift I to get into the insert mode. Why is it? Because you're going to be the beginning, beginning of insert. Right. Oh, the beginning of the blocks. It's just like capital I takes you to the beginning, beginning of the line. line. Right. You were moving, you were using your cursor to, to select uh, in the column. Is there a way to just select the entire column? Mm -hmm. you know oh, uh, probably. <laughs> probably shift, control shift. Dude. Yeah. <coughs> right. So, 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 uh, capital G <coughs> will go to the bottom of the file. So I, I, I position my cursor somewhere. I got in visual block mode, and I hit capital G, and it put my cursor at the first position on the last line, which is why it, the rectangle. So in reverse, because he wasn't on the first line anyway. Oh yeah, I wasn't on the first line because I. Why? Do I the visual block mode? What is it you're going to Control V. Right, so, so, so. Control Shift. Right, so, yeah, so there, 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 I demonstrated three different visual modes regular with V without modification, Shift V for the lines, and Control V for this block. I don't think there's a way to just select the whole column. He just did it. You might be able to do well, it. Well, okay, so he, oh, he but, did but it. That, but no, but I had to. But move. like, you can enter, you can enter line visual mode, right? By Shift V, will select a whole line, but there's no visual line, a visual column. Like, you no, just do visual and then go, oh, I don't Right. Wait, wait, wait. So, so, so the thing that wasn't quite right about what I did with Control V and then G is that it moved the cursor out of that column. Right. It moved it to the first column. So what about normal visual mode? Will it highlight everything along the way? Like yeah. The, okay. So, well, oops, I didn't enter visual mode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so it wraps around. Like normal text editor. Yeah, as as though this were all as, as as though it were just like all a string of characters and and these new lines are just pretty printing. Page down will work. Oh. But 
you have to do it until you hit the bottom of the file, but you can probably do a control page down or something. Possible, uh, there we can talk about this a little bit later. There are several arbitrary scripting languages that can be used to control them. Um, you can write it yourself. Um, the trick is getting the interface to be nice. Um, is, is it time for pizza? I think Michael signaled me. Did he? He said five minutes some time ago. I'll go check. Okay, thank you. Um, you can also push dot to repeat the command. Oh, I, I asked because we're a natural stopping point. Right now. Yeah. I feel. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> Do you want to ask if anyone else has any tips? Yeah, well, is there, uh, you, can, you can type in the command set relative number. You can type in set relative number if you use the relative numbers between lines. So you can just type in so, uh, go into command line, command mode, ah. set space relative number. Relative. Relative number. Rel rel uh, one word run together? Yes, one word. <laughs> Oh, oh, and it changes the. Oh, that's well, clever. Know how to jump. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I received word. The pizza is here. Uh, uh, please make an orderly fashion out to the lobby. <coughs> um, I'll stay here and watch everyone's gear. Do you want to let them okay. <laughs> tell people? Oh, yes. Bill, Bill is going to make sure nothing happens to your stuff, so feel free to leave it. In the room. As long as you trust Bill. As long as you trust Bill. <laughs> I don't know, have I signed your key? This is getting fucked by you. Are you the donation? Are you going to talk about I could. I was just worried that my macros at registers. Start. Um, it's going to move on to some 
commands that were a little bit more complex. They take arguments. Um, so ways to, to find stuff in the files and, uh, and manipulate it, uh, like you might with set. Um, so let's go back to our, uh, our favorite file that we've been working with. Uh, so uh, a, there's a, a, a command to enter a, a search mode. It's just slash. Um, you might be familiar with it from other tools that have adopted the same convention, like less. Um, so uh, I can type in little literal strings. Um, so if I want to find um, the string comment, um, I found all of them. Uh, there are various. Uh, I this is. It's actually easier to read in there. I find this highlighting annoying right now on my screen with this font size, so I'm going to turn it off. Um, so that's just another command. Um, uh, no highlight, highlight search. search. Um, uh, and now, now that I'm in the search thing, I can hit. Um, uh, came back. Why did it come back? Is that Yes, right. Um, and to go to the next match, uh, if I want to page through a file. Uh, I can also do a, a regular expression. Um, so say, well, let's, let's uh, make some edit. <coughs> Did Bill continue the recording? He started it back up. Uh, <coughs> say I want to find uh, the word quick but only at the beginning of the line, um, I can enter the, the quick QSK. I can enter the regular expression, and and I'll find that one in none of these these previous ones. Uh, that's dollars. Right, right. So I yes, thank you. I, I'm not sure if I want to go into pound search. Okay. What's question mark do? Question mark. Not 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 backwards. Question mark searches backwards. Question mark. Searches so if you hit um, asterisk, it'll search for the current word the next time. <laughs> so like if you. Right, so if, if I highlight my cursors on brown, I want to find next brown. Yes. And then. I can hit star. And then uh, pound sign <laughs> searches backwards. Oh, for the and pound is the analog of star for reversing. Um, yeah, and the and the the opposite of slash for searching backwards is question mark. Um, and and in capital and work and to go forward and oh and and, and then so oh, the, so so that's that's for I've made a search and now I'm scrolling scrolling through oh, the matches. Yes. Um, star and pound are take the current word whatever it is and search for it forward and backwards. So if you're on a editing code and you've got a variable name and you want to see it's the next place or the previous place where you're using it. How do you remember all this? <laughs> Muscle memory. <laughs> Bingo. Um, right, that's nice. Um, but I really want to take some sort of action to find something. Um, so I want to, say I want to replace my match or manipulate some way. I can um, use so I've hit colon to get into command mode again. I want to use the <coughs> said command so s um, and then um, like a, a simple uh, said replace uh, expression if you're familiar with that. So first the thing I'm looking for, whether it's a literal or a regular expression. Um, uh, brown, um, uh, and I can just do a replace. Um, so if I don't specify, it just operates on the current line. Uh, there, are, if I wanted to, yeah. So so I can. Um, No, I want the absolute numbers. Then just call them numbers. Um, numbers. I think it was end use. 
set number. Hey! Yes, I want to set the number. Um, I can operate on more than one line at a time. So I can pass it absolute numbers. So say I want to change lines 16 through 18. Um, uh, well, we'll get rid of sleepy. <coughs> Um, and so the, the pad, I'm, I'm just replacing the string sleepy with the empty string um, on line 16 through 18, and it's gone. Um, perhaps I should have mapped one of those spaces to, to get rid of it, so we don't have the double space. Oh well. Um, if I if I have a a um, repeat word on a line uh, and and I try to change it. Uh, so I, if I'm, I'm searching for quick, uh, I want to place it slow. Uh, if I don't specify, it will match the first one, do the operation, uh, and it will be done. So we only changed, in that instance, we only changed the first quick to slow. If I If I want to Take the operation, no matter how many times the match appears in the line, I'll, I do this. Um, I put a G at the end for global. Um, yeah, global, but it's still in the line. It's still in the line. Uh, so, so it's replaced on the line. Uh, so in, in addition to absolute numbering, there are some Shortcuts. There are also his, there's also a history there, so you can just hit the up arrow or not, and and go back through your history. Um, and if you like hit escape, and maybe you only want to search the so that hold, that holds all of your command line command history. But if you want to search for your last search, you can take Control F or colon S. And then hit up arrow, and then it'll only give you things that start with us. <coughs> so it's kind of like a few colon. Oops. I believe you can go. That brings up a lot of. It's a Q colon. And then you can go up, edit it, and re execute. Um, cool. And, and to help with relative numbering, set relative number. Now you can see which, like, from <coughs> you want to, um, you see how many how many lines above or below you are. Mm -hmm. So if you're addressing relative to the current line, right? Um, there's also uh, dot means the line I'm currently on. Um, so I can do something like zero comma dot for the beginning of the file till now. Um, and there's a shortcut for the entire file is percent. Um, so, oops. Ooh, percent S. Foo bar. Google. Yeah. Um, also, suppose <coughs> I, these were, um, this was a, looked like a file path. Um, Um, the, the, the separators between the field, fields and the set expression are arbitrary. So oftentimes if I'm <coughs> searching or replacing a string that contains a slash in it, or, yeah, or a file path, rather than trying to escape it, I'll just use a different character. Um, so in this instance, I'm going to replace the spaces in this line with slashes. Um, what happens if you do like the global um, or Search and replace with for the whole file with a percent. Every time I use that, I put slash g at the end for global. What have, what's the difference between not specifying global and specifying global? It'll only replace it one time for one line. First instance okay. of it. Yeah, yeah, so when you do the ranges, it's it's running that command multi, once per line. Okay. Um, it's lazy. It finds the first one and it quits. Um, 
So, so while, um, in addition to using, I, I had to look this up today um, to meet an editing need. Um, in addition to slash for searching, I can use G, like a white grep, um, and, and it will pull up the results. You can also do slash D on the end. Cool. Um, uh, how, how this came up, um, if we remember back to earlier when I brought multiple buffers, um, into Vim and, and then we were able to search them. It was great. Um, using the short name. V is an incomplete command. Yeah. Oh, and so if I had to put the space after V, tab would show me commands that start with V. But there's tab completion. Great. Um, macros? Control K. Control K. Jack, why not finish that V new concept? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's get rid of this one. Why? Uh, because it We'll clutter up the screen. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you can show Control W capital J Control J Control W capital L. All right. Now I've opened up files side by side. Now I can move between them. But what happens if you add the third file in the bottom? <laughs> so many ways to do it. <laughs> Why are there so many windows? Okay. Um, Options are your friend. Yeah. And to do it from the command line, just capital or dash capital O and dash lowercase O. Vertical versus horizontal. Okay. Are we satisfied with searching? Do so you want to show how you move a buffer from one to one to the other? Yeah, let's do that. So if you control, so if you're in the current buffer, you hit control 
W capital K. And we'll move it to the top. And if you're side by side, or control W J, we'll move it to the capital J, we'll move it to the right or to the left. And Can I change this to a <coughs> vertical? Yes. Uh, so control W capital L. And then, of course, there's always control W, control W. Yes, which just switches to the next cycle. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, if you've got a bunch of them that, that are mismatched sizes, control W equal will kind of equalize the, the size. So you're, you're already split. Yeah, yeah, there's always split equal. Well, control W plus will move it one character or one line, um, or blow it. It's uh, up there, up there, up there, up there. Or <coughs> control. It was control oh. W W underscore. I didn't do it. Yeah, when you're vertical, it does. Yeah. Or this is vertical. Horizontal. So control W, um, left, uh, left angle bracket, or right angle bracket. And you can put a count in front of that. Plus and minus move up and down when you're horizontal. Ah, oh, yes. So, 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 so for changing the, the splitting, for left and right when it's vertical, um, it's the, the angle brackets, uh, the things on the common period keys. And when it's the vertically split, it's plus and minus for up and down. Any other questions or tips about dealing with windows? <coughs> Tab new. Hmm. Tab new MRC. Colon Tab new. Space of MRC. <coughs> so there's a tab mode for Vim. Um, and then GT will move to the next tab. And then G capital T will move to the previous tab. Oh, just yeah. like in my browser. Yeah. Um, Why are you moving to the tab? GT and G capital T will move you forward and backward in the tabs. And how do you open a new tab? Tab. Tab new. <laughs> So, uh, and then you can do that from the command line with uh, dash capital P. Um, so if you've got a bunch of files, you can say vim dash P file names, and it'll open each file in a new tab. And you can have each tab split also, like with, <coughs> so if you've got, I don't know, .h files in one tab and .c <coughs> files in the other, you can easily switch between eight open files. Um, very nice. Oh. Why do this instead of opening up multiple Vim processes and leaving it to your window manager or terminal multiplexer to do it? Because uh, you can copy and paste between files easier. This way. Why would you want to leave this window? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. Let's, I've, I've, I've opened my macro file that I was going to use to demonstrate macros, um, which are pretty cool. So say you're, um, maybe I'll use the other file. Um, say you're writing a presentation, uh, and, there's some, and there's some things that you need to do repetitively. Um, for example, let's say I wanted to add a, a slide here between the history and we're just talking about the basic commands. Well, um, let's see, I would do that um, by typing begin frame, and then, oh, I need to give it a title. Um, and then I have to end the frame. Uh, and I have to do that over and over again. That's, that's sort of, that can get repetitive. Um, so, I can, I can record that sequence of commands, because those are just all editing commands. I 
position the cursor where I wanted to, I added insert mode, I inserted some text, um, and I got out of it in that case. Um, there could have been more, um, but you know, the basic idea is that I can enter a recording mode, record any editing commands I make, and it will save that, and I can replay them again later. Um, so if we just go to the end of this file, uh, and I, I'm going to do the example where, where I have a, a, a frame that I'm creating for my Beamer presentation. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out with a line of text that's the frame title. Um, so, macro example. Okay, um, so to, to enter the recording mode, I'm gonna hit Q, and then uh, whatever key I want to bind that macro to. Uh, this is for creating a frame. I'll use F, this will be the F macro. Um, so I'm in recording mode. Uh, <coughs> I've, before I knew about this, I often got into this accidentally because the Q is easy to hit, um, and it was, was, was bothered by it. Um, but now that I've learned about it, I feel much better. Um, Can I change the, the key mapping of the one? If I, if I was annoyed by that too much, yes. <laughs> um, but so now I'm just going to take whatever, whatever editing actions I would have taken before. Um, so, again, <coughs> frame, and frame. All right, um, and let's position the cursor at the end. Now I'm done with my macro, I'm going to hit Q again, um, and we'll have saved it. If I want to replay a macro I have saved, um, hit the at symbol, and then the, the letter I saved it as, so in this case, F. Oh, I did it wrong. You, you created it around an existing piece of text, text. macro example, so yeah. let's try having a piece that, of text. That's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, let's, let's try it uh, with an empty lines. No, type something, your title. Oh! Type title. Oh, oh, if I had some. Oh, I see it what you're saying. It has some text there. Yes. <coughs> so, new tab, new. You might need to get a line. Oh, I can't remember what I did. No, so, 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 so this is this. So this text, and then. Have a line below it. Have a line below. Oh, a free line. Yeah. And then try the macro on that. Ew. Do, do you have more of an explanation? Yes, you, you, you uh, I moved down to the empty line to type the end frame, yeah. but okay. you can't move down past the end of the file. When you're inserting, and your cursor was above the text, <coughs> and you started. Right. Yeah. Um, is there a way it may have done that so it would be more robust? Uh, instead of use, instead of just going there, use the O for open a line. It o, o puts you in. It's uh, yeah, put your uh, macro. Uh, okay, so we're gonna try this again. I'm going to. Um, okay. Uh, start by going zero to go to the beginning of the line. Well, I'm gonna exactly. start recording my macro. Go to zero to the, uh, insert uh, backslash begin frame. Oh, well, that works too. Well, all right. That, that's the text I wanted around. Okay, and so now I'm going to hit capital O to enter my text above. All right, and now I'm going to hit o. lowercase O, yeah, the, for the text below. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, lowercase O doesn't open below, and uppercase O doesn't open above. Still 
Can you edit your macro after you've saved it? Uh, probably. Yes. But <laughs> I don't know how. Um, I don't use macros. <laughs> uh, but so well, well, let's, let's, let's see if this trick worked first. Um, hey, thank you. I, yeah. Okay. Um, so actually, uh, yes. What if you want to type something with a Q in it? Well, uh, well so so I hit that Q um, when I was in normal mode. Uh, if I want to type something with a Q. How do you record a macro with the Q? Oh, with the Q. Oh, um, so you have to be inside your macro. You'll be in normal mode when you hit the Q. If you're in insert mode when you hit the Q, it will insert a Q normally. Um, Bill asks if I can edit the macro later. Um, I, I, I can sort of at great length. Um, let me get rid of these. Uh, so, so, so the macro, uh, I used F. Um, the macro is in the F register. I can, instead of using the default paste register um, that I get when I hit P, uh, if I hit the double quote character and then the name of register, so F and then P, I'll get what's in that register. Um, so so this, is what it, this is what the macro looks like. Uh, and I could, I could in theory edit this. Um, I don't really want to. Um, Gee, why not? <laughs> um, but but being able to get this information out. Yeah. As long as you know the control team shortcut. So if you need a if you need to type a control character, you type control D first. Oh yeah, that's useful. And then you can type the control character. Right. So, so these blue characters are not um, are not your regular characters. I type their control characters like tab, get line. Uh, but so if I get in insert mode and I want to type a control character, I hit control V, and then I get an old character. Control, v control v zero. Zero. Yeah. Uh, control M. <coughs> yeah. Uh, and tab is control V tab. If uh, well, I've turned regular tabs into spaces in my tab. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I need to type a real, honest to goodness tab. Um, uh, but but being able to get the macro out of the register is useful um, in case I want to uh, save a macro to be used between. Uh, sessions later, so so I can get this text, and if I put it, um, oh, there's a config file. We'll talk about the config file. Um, I can put it in in my Vim startup file um, uh, using using um, this notation. Uh, so this will define it and put it in the e register, uh, so that you can use it later. Um, right, I, I've talked about the config file. Uh, oh, here it is. Um, here's a, a simplified. Um, a simplified file to to show some things you might do. Um, and so, in this case, um, I decided that. That I really don't want tabs in my documents. Um, oh, in this case, I just said I really don't want tabs in my document. So, so I when I hit tab, it will actually we insert some number of spaces. Two. Um, no, that's no, that's not. Which one? So, by default, it's four. Shift width is your uh, greater oh, than less okay. than. And soft soft tabs. tab stuff. Uh, T uh, tab stop is your is your ah, number there. What is stop tab stop? I don't remember. It's the number of spaces that a tab counts for when performing editing operations like inserting a tab using yes. It feels like tabs insert. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. 
Setting the background to dark is useful on my terminals so I don't get navy blue text. We'll show what it looks like. Set background equal white. Oh. So the like the black the blue on black doesn't work too well in the Oh yeah, it looks much better on my screen. But yeah, you can't you can't see that blue text. Um, so this just chooses more sane defaults. Um, you can get config happy if you'd like. Um, so I was talking to somebody in the in the foyer. Um, there's a guy named um, Steve Francis, not like the Maryland, but the basketball player. But, um, there's a guy named Steve Francis. His uh, handle is SPF13. He has a Vim customization file that's multiple kilobytes in size. Um, so if you want to learn esoteric things to do with Vim, uh, you can go and look at his GitHub repository and look for that. S SPS 13. SPF. SPF. <coughs> oh, like the same screen. SPF 13. <laughs> um, uh, but There's way, way more stuff than you need or want, but if you, if you want to do it, he probably has done it, and you can just look at his VimRC and find cool. it. Cool. Um, What's the Vim load time like when you use that? Uh, it may take a second or two longer to load. Um, depends on your machine, but yeah, it's, it, it slows down loading Vim. But why would you quit Vim? <laughs> <laughs> Vim, it's the new Emacs. Okay, put a shell in the window. <laughs> How about just just run a command? Yeah, well, well, I, I like to point out um, these auto command lines uh, that I find pretty useful. Um, Essentially, when I'm editing some types of files, I want to run some commands when I first open the file to do certain things. So um, these two, um, I'm matching on the name of the file that, that Git will pass to Vim when I'm editing a commit message. Um, so it'll turn on spell check and, and insert new lines um, such that the lines don't exceed 72 characters. Um, and so rather than every time I'm typing a commit message, typing set local spell and set text width equals 72, um, these tell them that, that when you're reading in a new buffer, um, reading in a file into a new buffer, or opening a file where the name matches this glob. Um, so I believe these are blobs and not regular expressions. Um, consult your shells manually. Uh, it will run those commands. Um, so that's useful. Um, now, what was the thing I was supposed to get back to? A dollar sign, or a uh, bang. bang? Oh, yes, right. <coughs> um, so, uh, some more useful commands. Um, I can um, open up a shell. And here I've run ls. Um, it printed out the ls output. Um, and now if I hit enter, I can go back here. Um, so if I needed to look something up, I could do it that way. If I wanted to um, take the, the output of that command and read it into my buffer, that's r bang. Um, and there we have it. Um, Basics, macros, xmonad, or the. If you're editing C code and you type, I don't know. Like so, so I can also instead of reading in the output of the command, I can read it in a file. Oops. I can read it in a file that way. R. Um, um, with read and then the file name. You can also pass the line in the file through the command. There's, I can't remember how to do it offhand. There's also a way, if you forgot to open, let's say, a config file in sudo, uh, there's a way to reopen the file with your changes in a sudo vim. I don't remember. Oh, that. that's it's, clever. It is useful. I usually just write out a temporary file and then do my editing again. There's um, the man in the red coat. 
I can't hear you. Is there a W bang? Yes. 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 Force run. Um, no. So I want to. No, he wants to pipe the uh, the text into a command, right? Yes. Yes. W pipe. No. It's well. No, I don't know if the W pipe works, but you can you can do line addressing, bang, whatever. Whatever you want. So if you do percent bang, like colon percent bang sort, it'll sort that file. Bang sort. There's also there's also a sort in vim. Uh, so let's get rid of those duplicate lines. I don't know if there are any. No. It's not dash, just you. Oh. Yeah, we'll sort you too. <laughs> um, All right, if you're editing C code. Sudo, there's another trick that if you got sudo, someone gave me sudo privileges to edit a file, you effectively got root on the box. Yes. Because yes. once you sudo the file as root, you then drop the shell and away you go. Right. Um, if you yes, so you, you, may, you, may, you may want to look into sudo edit, which, which is the other way, is a, a sudo thing to take a file copy it to some location that you as a user can edit, where you could edit it as an editor as your user without escalated privileges, then sudo will secure a copy back. Uh, go highlight make. There you go. And hit capital K. Um, let's load the man page for whatever word is. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's pretty snifty. That is useful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so so it looks like we have ten minutes before we have to vacate the room. Is that am I reading my clock correctly, Bill? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, well, ten. Are we going to do six more hours of this? Uh, uh, <laughs> we could. <laughs> There's in the hallway. Yeah. Well, it, well, actually, in it, if if in addition to perhaps hacking on trial-like infrastructure stuff on the twenty-first, <coughs> if you'd like to come and sit around and collaboratively learn Vim or work on your Vim RC. Um, that is an approved use of that time. You know, feel free to do it on your own too. Um, but um, there, there are a couple of things I want to blow through uh, to make you aware of. Um, I just want to get this one. Um, macro we did, customization we did. Um, oh, and it, the, for the, the man thing, if you type the number, like. Oh, it'll look up that wanna, section. It'll look up that section. page, yeah. So if you need man, five man. That's useful. Um, so, I, Sorry, we didn't cover this, that's okay. We're, we're running out of time. But you can script it in various languages. Oh, I have an extraneous character. Um, oops. Uh, but, right, so some of them are, that it has its own scripting language, Vim script, also Python, Ruby, TCL. Um, the, the racket, MZ scheme, doesn't build currently. There's a build failure. Um, I I hope to look into that on the uh, hack session day uh, because it's a cool language and I wish I could script my editing in it. Oh, no. What have I done? complex applications with these scripting things. Not much is a male user agent that uh, that talks to a index indexing back end uh, and but it will display your nice text user interface in Vim. Um, th there's also a graphical graphical diffing utility in Vim that will open up your two files in pane side by side and as you scroll through them. Uh, also known as Vim minus D. Ah, yes. In addition to Vim diff, you can use Vim minus D. Uh, but it will keep this, the position of the file locked so as you scroll through one, the other one will move in highlight lines. Uh, it can be pretty useful. There's, yeah, there's code uh, folding tools in there so you can fold code and unfold. There's, uh, if you like, uh, moving around code 
code. There's a there's integration with CTEX, so you can uh, quickly go through an entire project <coughs> and um, find the definition of, of functions or variables or whatever. Lots of different things. You could make them into a full ID. <coughs> it is a full ID. <laughs> Um, yeah, you just have to integrate you it yourself. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you're if you're looking if you're new at Vim and looking to learn it, um, in addition to typing Vim Tutor and getting that um, file with explanations and exercises, um, there's an online tutor, uh, OpenVim.com, and there's a little JavaScript keyboard overlay that will flash which key you're supposed to hit. <coughs> um, that, that I find pretty neat because it has flashing lights. Um, if you want to, looking for a more advanced project, um, there is there is uh, collaborative editing support in Vim. Um, CoVim is the name of it. I believe they've invented their own protocol for doing so. That makes me sad. I really wish they would use the Avi protocol that's supported by both Gabi and Emacs because why you insist that your collaborators also use Vim. Um, this, I want to fix the scheme support. Um, although maybe I'll get bored and just implement Haskell support instead. Um, but that's OK. There are also other editors. Uh, so NVI is a, is a VI clone, uh, less featureful, but written more recently. Uh, Nano is a fairly simplistic editor. It's a free software clone of Pyco, which is ancient. Um, there are the various Emacs in. Uh, Yi is a editor that, oh, so Emacs really pioneered uh, this idea of a program that has a, a scripting layer that you can manipulate the, the, the program data and, and do whatever you want, which is um, not only inspired the features in Vim, but also other things like Audacity and anything that has a scripting interface to your application. It's great. Um, so Yi is a editor written and configured in Haskell. Um, and so essentially, you, your configuration program, your, your configuration syntax is just a Haskell program that produces a configuration object and passes it to the configuration object runner and runs it. Um, Sam and Acme um, were editors and user interfaces that came out of the Plan 9 project, um, which is a you know, nice project. Uh, Lime text, if you like Go, um, or, or like the idea of uh, whatever, Sublime Edit, um, it's, a, it's a free software work-alike. Um, and Kate and Gedit are in there as the editors from the GNOME and KDE desktop shells. Um, the author of them uh, is working to support a charity. Um, I invite you to donate to his charity. Um, it's working uh, for development efforts in Uganda, uh, where apparently they've been able to buy them branded drills. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh yes, but we had lots of questions, but but I wanted to show my question slide because I pulled this from Wikipedia, but. It's fine. Thank you. Um, I'll have the source for the slides and um, on the trailer website, they'll be linked. Um, yes, we have to vacate the room in two minutes is 15 seconds, more or less. So thank you for coming. Um, please let us know in person or by mail if you have questions.